All right, so we're looking at um, chapter 10.3, Surface Area of Rectangular Prisms, and it starts on page 763, so everybody should be there. Uh, we're going to look at the real-world link on the bottom of the page where it says Roberta is gift wrap, or it's wrapping a gift for her sister's quinceanera. She places it in a box with the measurements shown. So it's going to ask us, what is the area of one face of the box? And then go on to say, how many faces does the box have and what operations would you use to find the surface area? So go ahead and pause the video now and let's solve this. When you come back, I'll have the answers. All right, so your answer should be 100 inches squared for number one. There are six sides to a box, the top and bottom, the front and back, and then the two sides. And then what operations would you use to find the uh, surface area of the box? It would be multiplication. If you're an overachiever and you figured out what that was, it would be 600 inches squared. So the surface area of a rectangular prism um, is the length times width times height. So we've got uh, two times the length and the height, because that's our front and our back. Then we've got two times the length and the width, that's our sides. And then we've got two times the height and the width, and that's our top and bottom. I might have been confused about which one's top, bottom, and sides, but you get the idea. And we have two of each of them, so that's why it's times two. The surface area of a prism is the sum of the areas of its faces. So you would find the area of the back, you'd find the area of the side, the bottom, the front, the other side, and the top, and you would add them all together. Or you could find the area of the back and multiply it times two because the front's the same. You could do the area of the bottom, multiply that by two because the top is the same. And then find the area of one of the sides, multiply that by two, because they're both the same, and then add those three amounts together. And that's where we come from when we have this two times length times width plus two times length times height plus two times height times width. And I know I messed that up. All right, guys. I'm pausing the video because I'm being interrupted by a student. All right, now example one says find the surface area of the rectangular prism. So we need to um, find the area of each pair of faces. So we can look at the, and I like how they color coded these. Um, you can always write front, back, side, side, top, bottom, however you need to do it. Um, so finding the area, we're going to do base times height for each one because these are all rectangles. And so for this one, you need to know that this is six by eight, because if this is eight, then this is eight, then this is eight, then this is eight. Um, so 6 times 8 would be for this section, so that's 48, and I like how they wrote it inside because that's exactly what I would do if I had the net. And then for this one, we see that this is 6 by 7, so that's going to be 42. Um, and then for this one in the middle, you need to know that if this is, let me change colors here, if this is 7, then this is 7, then this is 7, then this is 7, I don't think I changed colors, I'm outside doing this now. This is seven, then this is seven, then this is seven, then this is seven, then this is seven. So it would be um, seven by, and then we already said that this was eight, and so seven by eight will be 56. And so if you have those three parts, those three different, then you can multiply each of them by two instead of figuring each one out. So you could do um, two times 42 plus two times 56 plus two times 48 and then solve it out that way. Or you can find each one and just add them all together. Either way, you'll come to 292 meters squared. All right, now the net, um, the net shows that a rectangular prism has six faces and the faces can be grouped as three parts of congruent sides. The colors indicate which faces are congruent. So they're saying like that these are the same, um, that this is the same as this, and that this is the same as this. Lots of drawing all over the place. All right, I want you to go ahead and um, solve this one. Notice again that they already color coded it for you, which is great. So you can just um, put in the units as you need to and um, fill in in the colored section. I want to demonstrate, but I'm not, I don't want to give you the right answer um, or the, the answer already, just like they did where they wrote inside what the area was for each section and then you can add them all up or you can find the three different ones and multiply each one by two and then add those together. I'll come back with your um, answer. Go ahead and pause the video now and find the answer. To All right, 
So here's the answer for A. I found the area of each one. Notice how I did different colors here. I showed which ones I needed to, um, which, ain't, ugh, sorry, I'm leaving the classroom because nobody can be quiet. I'm, le I'm using the sides to uh, demonstrate which one goes with what. You know, that these are the same and that these, um, these are the same with pink. So I try to color code for my corresponding sides or my congruent sides. Um, so that you knew that those were all the same. Each of these are ten. Okay, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. They're all tens. Um, this top and this bottom, they're both ten. This top and this bottom, they're both ten. This is fifteen, 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 and fifteen. So that kind of idea. And so altogether, it's eight hundred inches squared. So finding the surface area using a formula, um, if you know what your length times height times weight, or sorry, <laughs> width is, then you've got all the different um, dimensions that you're going to need to find the area of that same figure. So example number two says find the area, um, the surface area of the rectangular prism and this time they're just giving you length, width, and height. And so what I would recommend is that you identify what you're using H1 for. So if you want the length to be seven feet and the height to be four feet and the width to be five feet, then you need to label it over here. That way when you're doing your um, formula of surface area equals two times length times width plus two times length times height plus two times height times width, you'll know exactly what numbers to plug in or, um, or uh, Substitute. Sorry, that it was like right there at the tip of my tongue. Which which numbers to substitute for which letters? So, um, and if you keep it all straight and forward, then you'll be able to do each one. So that's how I would recommend doing it if you're using the formula. Um, set up the formula. Identify, like, make a key of what your length, your width, and your height are, and then plug them all in. So go ahead and do that with um, number three. They've given you um, each of the pieces. They're saying, okay, let's figure out what the front and back is. Let's figure out what the top and bottom is and then the two sides. Um, but what I'd like you to do is um, make a key like I just did. And then I want you to use the surface area formula, which is two times length times width. And again, it doesn't really matter which ones I use. Two times length times height plus two times height times width and then substitute each one in after you've identified your length, your width, and your height. So go ahead and substitute those in. You can also use this diagram if you'd like, um, but what I'm going to be looking for will be this right here. All right, and here's the answer. Um, again, I think it's great when you can identify your length, your height, and your width, and then plug that into that equation. Um, you know, they have it over here as well, which is completely fine. Uh, I just think that this is the easier way to go. There's also a table that can be made, and I can show that to you um, in class if you'd like to see that as well. All right, so it says find the surface area of the rectangular prism, uh, 3 by 4 by 2. So go ahead and find that, and when you come back, we'll go over the answer. Pause the video now. All right, so for B, I did um, the same one that I was showing you before with the length times, or the length, width, and height. I identified them here as my key. And then down here, I did my uh, formula, which is 2 times L times W. And again, I might be switching these on occasion because I don't. it doesn't really matter which one is in which place because I'm going to multiply it by 2 and add them all together either way. So um, it's just making sure that I've gone through each of the different, you know, deals here with L times W, L times H, and H times W. All right, so 52 meters squared. For number four, example number four, um, yeah, you know I don't know what that word is. So that rock, a rock is being sent as a gift. Maybe a crystal rock, we'll call it. Um, it is packed in a box that measures seven inches long, three inches wide, and 16 inches tall. What is the surface area of the box? So um, they've given you the dimensions, and again, you can just... They, they use the formula, which I'm glad they finally used uh, the actual formula. Um, I would just identify, okay, okay, my L is 7, my W is 3, and my H for t tall is 16. And for once, these are all inches.
Congratulations. All right, so here's my, oopsie, sorry. So here's my key. And then you'll just use the formula, uh, 2 times L times H plus 2 times L times W plus 2 times H plus W. Um, so when we put it all together, it's 362 square inches. Okay, so um, I haven't been doing this before, but I'm going to start doing this on occasion where I'm going to grab some problems from the um, extra practice and go over them. I'm only going, so flip, you know, two more pages down and you'll find it, um, the extra practice page. I'm only going to do the evens because the odds you can work on on your own. So it says find the surface area of each rectangular prism, um, 150 feet squared. And let me just say that um, you don't have to continue watching the video. You can stop now, but this is just for those of you that are not sure that you're feeling very strong with it. Have some more examples. Um, and so I'm going to do the chart too, just so you guys can see the chart a little bit. So, um, or table or whatever we want to call it. So find the surface area of each rectangular prism. And, um, I know this is already done for you, but we've got this and this, um, you know, if, whether you're calling it your top, your side, the bottom, the top, whatever, we know that there's only so many. So here's my table. I'm going to have, um... Well, this is a square, so this is kind of inconvenient, but we're going to have a 5 by 5, okay? So I'm going to do 5 times 5, which equals 25 feet squared, and then that's going to be times 2. Oh, maybe not that. Times 2, and so 50 feet squared. Then maybe I'll use a different color here, and I'll do these two sections. And so here I know the top is 5 because this top is 5. And I know the side is 5 because this side was 5 over here. So now we've got, again, a, a side that's 5 by 5. So we're going to do base times height. Um, so we get 25 feet squared. And again, there's two of these that match. Oops, sorry, the doorbell's ringing. All right. It might go off again. Sorry. Oops, it did. Sorry. All right, so that's 50 feet squared for this one. All right, and then one more color here. We've got this one and this one, and we're going to say, okay, this is five by five. It's actually on there, five by five, and so five times five is 25 feet squared times two of them, and so we've got 50 feet squared. Now we're going to add up all our different sides. We've got our 50 here, um, plus our 50 in green, plus our 50 in blue. And so add it all together, 150 feet squared is our final answer. Seriously. All right. Okay. The number 14. Um, We'll do the same thing if you want to try this before I go over it, just to see how you're doing. You can. You can use the table if you'd like to, or you can um, use the formula. I would say with this one, the formula would be the best bet, fastest way to go. I'll be right back. Pause your video now. All right, so you can look through my work if you'd like to. You know, the whole time that I had that paused, it did not go off at all, and now it's going off again. All right, so uh, 142 feet squared. I don't... I, don't know what I did there, but that's supposed to be feet squared. So let me fix it. Um, is the surface area of this rectangular prism. And so you can look through my work if you'd like to. Um, this is my key, of course. All right, so this time Nadine is going to paint her youngest, her younger sister's toy chest, including the bottom. What is the approximate surface area that she will paint? Again, um, I would go with my identifying length, width, and height and use the formula. That's just me, so that's what I would do. Um, go ahead and figure out how you'd like to do it. The bottom line, we should both get the same answer, so try it. Pause the video now. All right, and so the area of this chest, this toy chest, is 3,610 inches squared. And it's funny because as I'm doing it, of course, you know, my, my forgottenness, my, my forgetfulness, my forgottenness. All right, then, people. Um, my forgetfulness that... Um, I had to look and say, wait a second, would they really paint the bottom? Why am I including the bottom? So I had to look back, and of course it says including the bottom, so we're good. Otherwise, it's a little bit more work that we have to figure out. 
Um, but I bet a, a problem will probably come up like that at some point in time. All right, that's the rest. That's the end of my um, video, guys. It's 10.2, or sorry, 10.3, a surface area of rectangular prism. Sorry, I'm throwing off my game. And I hope you have a great day. Talk to you all soon. See you in school.